Hey guys, it's Legendary Narwhal back again, and today um, I j I'm d recording this just literally as I'm uploading the previous video for this, um, which is kind of detailing in here the achievements you need on certain ships to unlock the Type B model of certain ships. Okay, so I'm going to be going through these in great detail. Not massive detail, but I'm going to be showing you all the Type Bs here and just kind of giving you my thoughts. So, first up is the variant of the Kestrel. Okay, this is the Red Tail. Um, the first thing that really jumped out at me, not even really a gameplay changing thing, just the color of this looks a lot like the Rebel ships. I, uh, I don't know if that's intentional or not. It's a little odd, I'll admit. Um... But anyhow, so if take a look at the ship layout here, we've got two humans, a Zoltan and a Mantis. Um, <sighs> awkward airlocks, kind of. I mean, there's airlocks here in the middle, both sides here, double ones over here. I guess it's good in that all of the rooms are pretty close to an airlock. I don't really think you need to open more than two doors to air out any room in the whole ship. Um, I guess the exception of uh, sensors in this empty room right here. Um, one thing I can't say is I don't know where things like, uh, if you got cloaking, I don't know which of these rooms it would take up. It would take up one of them, and then drones would take up the other. Uh, teleport, I don't know where that would be. I'm assuming teleport would be right here if you purchased it. Um, I can't really picture going anywhere else, but, uh, for Redtail... It has some basic systems here, quite a bit of weapon power right off the bat. It has four basic lasers. Now, these are basically the shittiest weapons in the game, but this ship has four of them. So, this basically means that you can do damage to anything in the game except the final boss the second you launch this ship. Because one shield bubble, two shield bubble, three shield bubble, damage. Okay? Really, as far as I'm concerned, anyway, as far as I know, the only thing in the game that has four shield bubbles is the final boss. So, you wouldn't be able to break through with this at all. But since each of these fires one shot doing one damage, you can just shred everything within, really, the first entire half of the game uh, with this kind of firepower. So, as a ship to beat the game with... It's very good because it starts off with a configuration of you won't really need to do anything to your weapons until a lot later on. Now, it would be advised, in my opinion, to get things like missiles a little early on, things like that, but you don't have to. So the base stuff on this ship will carry you very far, which is awesome, in my opinion. So, thumbs up. I have a thumbs up for the red tail. Next up, the variant of the Nasayo, which is the st uh, NG Stealth Cruiser, is the DASR-12. Now, one thing that this shares with the other model is you can see that neither of them have any shields. This has no shields, and this has no shields. Now, you'll also see this one only has one cloak. However, this one begins with two. The reasoning behind this is the first starts with four bubbles in the engines, giving you quite a bit of dodge very early on. This one does not. So, even though the upgrades are cheap to catch up, I mean, 45 here, and then 25 and 25 in the reactor, so 90, you're 95 scrap away from making this engine equal to this engine. But it's still going to hurt you early on. Um... Crew is kind of similar. You're switching out a human for a Zoltan, which is nice. You can provide a little bit of extra power. The biggest thing, though, comes from the Glaive Beam right here. Um, as the description there says, one of the most powerful weapons war ever created. This is basically, in my opinion, the most powerful weapon in the game. Um, I don't think there's anything that can do more damage, just more raw damage to an unshielded target, except arguably a Pike Beam. Maybe. But, as you can see here, it requires a lot of power, all four of these weapon bubbles here, so you're not going to be using much else if you are using this weapon. Um, 25 charge time on this, which is going to 
cripple you early on if you're not really careful about the way you use your cloak and your shield. Um, really just hold off on this until they fire their volley because you need to use this as late as possible because you, you need to buy time for this. It's your only weapon. Um, that being said, though, damage per room hit three. If you hit an unshielded target with this, you're probably going to kill it in one shot, more than likely. Um, three damage per room hit, though, also means it can penetrate. I believe that's up to two bubbles of shield. It'll lose one damage for every shield it passes through. So if you attack something with one bubble, it'll still do two damage per room. Two bubbles, one damage per room. So it can still penetrate and do damage to anything up to three bubbles. If it has three bubbles, then you're boned, and you need to either run or hope you have another weapon, to be completely honest. Um, definitely a very unique playstyle. Having no shields makes it really strange. Um, however, you know, let it be known that any system you don't have, you can still buy. So, I mean, you can buy shields with either of these ships. It's just 150 scrap. So you're going to want to get them, for sure, at some point. But overall, this ship is really cool. I mean, the Glaive Beam is very unique. I haven't been able to get my hands on it, other than just having it here as a starting weapon, so it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Now, real quick here, I'm just going to... Well, real quick, I'm going to have a drink. God, I'm recording this pretty late at night, so just bear with me here. Type B of the Mantis Cruiser, this is unique in a lot of ways, and it's also one of the most powerful sh starting ships in the game, as far as I'm concerned. The biggest, well, there's a lot of switches, actually, that you're going to notice. One thing I want you to keep your eye on is the crew, and the other is the weapons compartment here. Boom. You don't have any weapons. It doesn't give you any weapons at all. It gives you two Mantis, however... Look at all of this shit. Most importantly, though, stealing a line from Tales of Lumen there, most importantly, though, look at this four-pad teleporter. It's it's fantastic. This is the only ship in the entire game you will see that has a four-pad teleporter. Now, it's balanced out by the fact that at the beginning of the game, you're actually in a little bit of a worse spot because you can't take advantage of this. You only have two crew members. In type A, you have four. So you can send two guys over in your two pad and then have two people manning systems. Over here, you can still only send two people, even though it has four pads, because you only have two people, and you won't have anyone behind manning any systems. Now, when you send these two over, you can also choose to send over a boarding drone, or you could send a boarding drone over in place of your actual crew. So, you, it's kind of like you're boarding with three, and if you use the boarding drone to tank, then that could be very good as well. Starts so off with a defense drone for taking care of missiles, mostly because you're not going to have any evade chance. You won't have anyone manning the cockpit. You'll be sending both of them over to board, so you'll have zero evade. So you're not going to dodge anything. So this is for taking care of missiles, and then two shield bubbles is for taking care of beams. This ship begins with two shield bubbles. It, it starts with practically everything, really. I think the only system this ship does not start with is a cloaking device. It has everything else. Now, obviously, because of having no weapons, you're going to run into a lot of trouble with AI ships with this. The beginning of your game, if you pick this, is going to be very, very rough. If you hit any unmanned ship, your best bet is probably to just run away. Um, most of the AI ship's compartments don't have doors, so even if you do launch a boarding drone in, it's going to crash into one room, and it may not even have a system in it. And you, it's not going to be able to leave the room, because there's no doors. So, that's a thing. And you can't use these guys. You can't use regular crew, like Mantis or humans or anything else. You can't use them against AI ships until you have all three ranks of your crew teleporter. Because if you teleport crew onto an AI ship, AI ships have no oxygen. So, they're going to instantly start taking asphyxiation damage. Now, if you have a rank 3 teleporter 
you will be able to send them onto an AI ship if they have full HP, keep in mind. If they have full HP, they can still deal damage to the system, and your teleport will come off cooldown in that 10 seconds quick enough to pull them back out. So you can heal them up real quick, med bay's right next to the teleporter, so get them back, heal them up, and then send them right back into the fight. So you can take out AI ships with this, but really only if you have two more bubbles in here. Um going to be running away from a lot of fights, I think, probably in the beginning, but it, it looks to be a very unique and a very fun ship to play with overall. <sighs> this one I don't really like. I don't really like. I, I appreciate what they were going for with this, but I still don't like it. So, with this ship, this is the B version of the NG ship, the Taurus. So this is the Vortex. It doesn't have any sensors, so that's kind of a problem, but it's not a huge deal. I mean, if someone boards your ship, you can see a little red fist above whatever system they're attacking. And if they're not attacking a system, you'll be able to see a door flashing red when they're hitting it. So if you just you if you pay attention you'll know if there's a border on your ship and if you have your sound on you'll be able to hear a fire so you know just open some doors you'll be able to see fire icons if it's in any of the systems so uh, you can get by without using your sensors it's okay but you only have one crew you have one that's crippling early on. You only have one person that's going to be getting experience. That's terrible. You're not going to have anyone getting experience on shields. You're not going to have anyone getting any experience dodging anything on the engines. You're not going to have anyone getting any experience firing weapons. None of that. You're not going to have any of it. Airlocks are pretty awkward. There's only two here and two here. Um... You really want to be careful on ships that have doors right next to airlocks because if you try and flush someone out and then they kill your door system, you're going to be fucked because you're not going to be able to repair that to close those doors again. So you really need to be careful. Um, drone reactor booster drones move faster. That's not really all that great. Heavy ions, pretty good. Um, it does two ion damage. That's to be noted. The ion blast two only does one damage. Um, one ion damage, that is. It doesn't actually do any real damage. Um, but you, you're really going to miss these two crew. You really are. Um, this one fires every four seconds. This one here fires every 13. It only requires two power, though, in comparison to this one over here, which requires three. Um, Overall, it doesn't matter. This has a longer charge time because it does more ion damage. It will shut a system down for longer. This one right here, this heavy laser, um, it's only a one-shot deal. It's a one-shot deal. Now, if you keep this targeted on their shields, you'll be able to pin their shields down and actually deal damage. And that's really the only thing you can do to start off. If you get boarded, they want you to use the anti-personnel drone to fight off intruders on your ship. If something gets damaged, they don't want you to leave the cockpit. They want you to use a system repair drone in order to kind of solve that issue. Now, the drone flavor is nice, but and I'll show you here. It doesn't really matter what game mode I'm on. They're encouraging you to use drones for everything. It's a drone-based ship. They only give you six. That's not very many. <laughs> That's a very, very small number. I don't know what they want you to do. Only giving you six drone parts. That's really, really bad. You need to acquire these as quickly as you possibly can. You're really going to be relying on this for a while, especially until you get any offensive drones. I mean, personally, I would get rid of these system repairs as quickly as possible, but I guess keeping one could be handy. I'm going to go ahead and uh, exit back to the hangar real quick, because I was only doing that just to show you that it's not a good idea. I appreciate the drone flavor, but it's a, it's a bad design. It's a bad design. Now... Arguably, this would be good if they started you off with a drone recovery arm augment, which any drone that is out in space uh, that is not destroyed that's yours will come back to you after the fight. So if you use offensive anti-ship drones and then a defensive drone for yourself, if those drones are still there at the end of the fight, you'll get all those drone parts back. 
so you essentially won't lose any. The only drone parts you don't get back are going to be things like anti-personnel drones, which to be fair, once you activate it, they stay active on your ship until you depower them or until it is destroyed. So you don't need to recover them because it just stays on your ship. System repair drones are the same way. They're not going to go away unless they get destroyed. So if you activate one, even if you jump to a new sector, it's still there. It's not going to leave. It's not going to just fall apart. So all of these drones will just persist through and then the drone recovery arm could haul back in any drones you use out in space. Now, on the flip side, that could make this ship massively overpowered because you would have a lot of free defense, essentially, and free offense that you would just get back all the time. Um, so I don't really know how well that would balance out, but a closing note is I don't really like this ship. I don't like it a lot. Get some more milk here. Ah, excuse me. Milk, good for your body. Type B of the Federation Cruiser. This one... It's in a little bit of an okay spot. I mean, the burst laser fires three shots. Which I miss, because this only fires two. Now, it has a slightly quicker charge time. It only requires one power. So to be fair, dual lasers are actually very strong. Because they only require one power to use. Now, the Leto Launcher is a piece of shit and you really should sell this as soon as you possibly can. I mean, as you can see, it, yeah, it has a charge of 9 seconds, but it has low chance of fire and breach, and it only deals 1 point of damage. If you're using this, either you really are trying to punch through their shields to get something, or you're just and you're being desperate about it, or you're just wasting all of your missiles. Because if you, especially if you play with auto fire, which by the way you should never do, except in very specific circumstances, if you're playing with auto fire, you're going to suddenly find yourself completely out of missiles, because you're not going to have any. Now, you do have three crew, and it's a nice mix. You have a slug, a Zoltan, and a human, so that's pretty cool. Um, airlocks are a little odd. There's some in the middle, and then there's some up here on both sides. So, it's okay. Um... Med bay is very far away from this end of the ship, though, and that could cause problems with the med bay being all the way over here. Um, shield and weapons, at least they're right next to the med bay, but I don't know. It's a strange layout. It's very strange. Um, it starts off with two bubbles in the artillery beam, which is nice. They definitely want you to kind of utilize this for sure. In the other one, they only give you one. Now you'll notice if I tab back and forth, none of the other system powers are changing. The only thing that changes is one additional bubble here. So these two ships are pretty much the same, to be fair. They're pretty much the same. Um, this one just has a little bit better anti-shield capability, but arguably this three-shot thing is going to punch through most shields in the first several sectors anyway, so you shouldn't really have that many problems. This crew's a little bit better repelling borders. You've got a Rockman and a Manus. This one, uh, slugs are fine, humans are fine, the Zoltans are just weak, so... Eh, it's alright. Moving on here... Uh, the slug ship I like a lot, by the way. I really like the flavor of the anti-bio beam. But type B... Boom. So let's look at this here for a second. So there's a couple things here about, about this ship. So first off, you can see you only have missile-based weapons here. Okay, You have the Artemis, which it's okay. It does two damage a shot. It's all right. Now you also have a healing burst. You're not going to find these in the game all that much from my personal experience, so it's kind of cool to get to use these. Um, the main strategy with this ship is you got three slugs and you got a two-man teleporter. To me, that means one of them's piloting and the other two are boarding. So you're boarding other ships. That's really what you're doing, is you're boarding other ships with slugs. That is what this ship is for. Now... Your boarding will be very successful, because even against things like Mantis, if you just wait for a little bit and charge this up, then when you use this healing burst, all of a sudden, you heal all of your boarding party when you hit them with this. 
This basically makes all of your boarding attempts successful. Pretty much 100% of the time, as long as you have missiles. Now, Obviously, you can't do the whole thing with AI ships, mostly because you don't have three, te uh, three in the teleporter, you can't pull them back, so you do need to use the Artemis for that. You do need to use the Artemis for that. Now, I will start in here really quick as well. You can see you start with 25 missiles. That is a pretty high number, to be fair. So, they, are, they do want you to go with the whole healing burst on your people that you send aboard, and then you can actually fully kill automated ships with Artemises if you really need to. You should probably still be running away from some fights. Now there's one more thing I don't like about this ship though, and that's something that has the potential to be really crippling unless you fix it pretty quickly. There's one system you'll notice missing here that I think every other ship in the game has, and that's a med bay. This ship doesn't have one. The only way you can heal anyone, even if you're not boarding, is by spending a missile. You must spend a missile to heal your crew. There is no other way to do it. You don't have a med bay. That's something I would purchase as quickly as humanly possible, because that's free healing, as opposed to spending a missile every time you want to do it. So, it's a little bit dangerous. A little bit dangerous. Rock ships are basically notoriously known for being missile-based. Type B is a little bit of an exception, to be fair. They have a heavy pierce laser. Now, this is pretty awesome because it pierces one shield bubble. It charges relatively quickly, and it deals two damage. It only fires a single shot. However, that one shot will pierce one shield. So you can use your laser to take out things that only have one bubble of shield pretty damn quickly. Now... You have four rock crew member, so that's pretty awesome. You can man a lot of stuff right away. One thing you'll notice is that you don't have a door system on this ship. You don't have a door system at all. Now, I don't really think you should bother buying one with this ship, and here's why. If you look at the outline, you'll see there are no airlocks. This ship does not have airlocks. So, you can't use door control to flush out attackers. If you purchase door control, it will not add any new doors. It's only going to affect your existing doors. It's not going to magically add airlocks. So, really all door control is going to do is impede their movement around the ship so you can keep them in certain areas. But there's not a massive reason to do that, especially because you have four rock crew members. So... You can pretty much take on anyone that boards you anyway, so you shouldn't really be concerned about that. Um, one thing that's awesome is you have a firebomb. Get some milk real quick. God, just finish that off so it won't be interrupting me again. Damn you, thirst. Damn you. Um, but here, firebomb. One system I would have liked to see on this ship that they don't start you with is a teleporter. Um, that's something I believe you should acquire very, very quickly when you use this ship. Mostly because if you teleport two rock crew member on their ship, and then you spend one missile with this firebomb to create a fire in that room, then you win. You basically just win everything forever, because you're fighting in a room with guys that are immune to fire damage. And you're just starting fires everywhere. Now, you can also use this to target your own ship. And, yeah, you want to be a little bit careful about fires spreading and damaging your system, so I can see maybe getting doors and upgrading them so that you can kind of keep people contained in a room and then firebomb it or something like that. And the, the extra doors will help if you do use the firebombing your own ship tactic. It'll help impede it from spreading into system rooms that you don't want the fire to be in, because it'll still destroy your own systems, and you don't want that. But... This has a lot of synergy with rock men since they're immune to fire, and if you get your hands on a teleporter, then I can see this going very well for you. Um, not only that, but I believe it looks badass. This, this, the red and black color scheme, this ship looks amazing, it really does. Um, I think this is probably one of the better ships. I still think the Red Tail is probably the best, but the Shivan is very close to being the best in my opinion, because the Pierce laser is really good, and Firebomb with Rockmen, that's awesome. And if you get a teleporter, then you're golden. You really are. You only have one missile launcher, but you still get 18 missiles. You can still use this weapon 18 times. That's a lot. 
Now, do realize you cannot use both at the same time. You don't have enough power for that. Now, you can get that fairly quickly, so it's not a huge concern, but still it's something that you do need to watch out and just kind of be aware of when using this. Alright, we're almost there, guys. Home stretch. If you haven't already turned this off, if I have not already bored you with my milk drinking unprofessionalism. So, Type B of the Zoltan ship. It's similar to the original one, except uh, there's something that it has that's actually a nerf that makes it a little bit dangerous. Um, well, one thing is it still has three Zoltan. That doesn't change. It still has three Zoltan. Um, apparently one of them is Notch. But three Zoltan, so the crew doesn't really change. Um, ion Blasts, very quick charge time, nice bit of ion damage. You can bring someone's shields down with this very, very quickly, and then proceed to use one to lock the shields and one to lock the weapons out, and just continue to spam them, and then use the pike beam to just shred the entire ship. And you can do that very, very effectively. The layout is very weird. The med bay is kind of far away from some of these rooms over here. But this is all very centralized. That's nice. Shield room. You can easily vent out. You've got double airlocks up here. The only other airlock is way in the back. So if you get a fire kind of in this midsection here, you're going to need to render quite a chunk of your ship uh, oxygenless in order to kind of put that fire out. One thing you want to be careful of is in Type A, besides the Zoltan Super Shield that you already have that absorbs five charges, you also have one bubble of shield. Okay, that's pretty standard. What's this? One power bar in shields. So this ship will not start with any shield bubbles at all. You will only have the five-shot Zoltan Shield at your disposal. As soon as that shield goes down, you are very, very vulnerable. So you really need to get those ions, you really need to bring that shield down and shut down those weapons as quickly as you can, because you don't want them to get off more than five. Now this will block beams and missiles and bombs and teleporting, so this gives you a very, very good safety net. I believe you can still, if you have a high evasion chance, dodge shots and prolong the existence of this shield, so that's cool. But getting one shield bubble takes a lot of scrap. A hundred scrap just to get one bubble of shield. Then it only takes 50 to get an entire another bubble. So getting this first one is going to be a priority, but it's going to be a very expensive one. So that's something that you do need to be careful of if you do want to use this ship. Again, though, very unique, the thing with, oh, well, we don't have real shields because we have a Zoltan shield. And then they give you the tools necessary to deal with that. I mean, even if they don't give you any shields, this has really good synergy. Because, yeah, you don't have any real shield bubbles, but you have a Zoltan shield. And they give you the equipment to very quickly neutralize shields to open up their ship. And they give you a pike beam, which, like I said earlier, this and the glaive beam, arguably the most powerful in the entire game, weapon-wise. This thing has a huge line for attacking. This thing can massacre an entire ship just incredibly quick. And you can power all these at once. You have four bars here, and then it's one, one, and two. That equals four last time I checked, so... You can power everything, decent systems, with the exception of the shields, so it's not bad. It's not a bad ship. Finally, we have the Crystal ship. I'll spend a little bit on the Type A, because I know this is one a lot of people probably won't have. This is one I myself don't have in my save file. Um, this ship is very, very annoying to try and obtain. I've gotten... I've gotten Crystal crew members several times in my own playthroughs, but basically you need to get a random event to get a stasis pod. You need another random event to get the stasis pod open. And then you need another random event after that in order to actually get into the sector that has this. Now those random events aren't just random, they're even more random. They're random random. So the first one, you can kind of pick up anywhere. You usually get it in like asteroid fields and stuff, but you can get it anywhere. The second one, though, to open it, I believe that has to be an NG or a Zoltan sector. 
and it's just a random node in an NG or a Zoltan sector in order to get the pod open and get this guy as a crew member, a crystal crew member. After that, you need to be able to find the third random event inside a rock homeworld sector. It has to be a rock homeworld sector. If it's not, it will not occur. So, this ship is a string of random crap that's going to be really hard to accomplish. So, have fun with that. Crystal crew members, um, they have a lockdown power, so you can use the crew member itself to lock down an entire room, basically meaning they cannot enter any of the doors for a certain period of time. Uh, their movement speed's reduced a little bit, their health is increased slightly, not as much as Rock, but these guys are kind of cousins to the Rock crew members and things like that, so they're very similar. Um, the one thing they have, though, is they have reduced suffocation damage, so they don't take as much from asphyxiation as others, um, and this will play into the Type B really well when we take a look at that. Uh, the crystal weapons here, you can see their kind of thing is that they pierce shielding, just by default. So this one fires two shield piercing shots, two shield piercing, two shield piercing shots. Say that a hundred times fast. Um, so you fire two shots. Each one is going to pierce through one shield bubble. This one here, damage per shot two. Again, it will pierce through one shield. So you can kill just about all the ships in the first few sectors with these weapons. It's not very difficult. Type B now. Type B is the one I'm most interested in here. You don't have any weapons again. <laughs> this is this is a big thing coming up. Is you you're not having any weapons. This is the only other ship with a four pad teleporter. I believe I mentioned on the uh, basilisk. I think. Yeah, on the basilisk. I believe I said this was the only one. I was mistaken. I was thinking of both of those ships kind of having the same main advantage. This one has a four pad teleporter, so that's awesome. And then this one right here, the Carnelian, this one also has a four pad teleporter. You can take a lot of advantage of that because you have three crew members right off the bat, not just two. So you can use all three of these in there. Now you have one bubble of shield, not that great, to be fair. However, you do have a teleporter. You can take use of that right away. And you have a cloak. That's pretty cool. You don't have drones. I believe drone is the only system you do not have, so that would pop right here if you go ahead and buy that. But I believe you have every other system. Now, do keep in mind, whenever you do obtain a weapon, that first upgrade, tab 2, you can see here it's going to cost you 60 scrap. That's a lot. Things like the shields and the weapons, those have very high numbers low like that on purpose, because most of the time you already begin with that. This one you can't see, but right below that 20, there would be an 100 there, like I showed you in the Zoltan ship. So, these things can start off pretty damn expensive, and that's something that you want to keep note of. Now, their reduced suffocation damage means that you probably need to run from any automated fights in the first sector or two until you get this upgraded at least once. Now, I don't know how much their suffocation damage is reduced by, but just the fact that they have a little more HP than normal. Typically, you need all three ranks in here to pull off successful boarding and retrieval of your guys before they suffocate of an AI ship. Usually, you need rank three. I believe you can get by with rank 2. So if you upgrade this once and then divert some power to it, I believe, uh, well, let's see. I mean, in normal, you only start with 10. Okay, so you wouldn't be able to do that. But if I go back here again, let's take this type B easy start. So you do have 30. So if you did that right away, you could accept that, power that, and now you have two bubbles here. You could take all these guys, send them all in, and you could board a ship right away. Now, you do need to wait a minute, because as you can see, you need someone to pilot to jump, and that's way over here. They're not super slow, but that takes a while to walk there, so you are going to need to walk that distance. You may just want to send these two guys right away. Um, but that would be my viable strategy for if you're doing easy and you have the scrap to do it right off the bat because I believe with two bubbles you'll have time with their extra HP and the reduced asphyxiation damage that they take to actually get in some good damage on an AI ship and then pull them back. Um, the other reason I wanted to bring these guys out here is so that I could demonstrate the lockdown power that they have. I was waiting for it to charge up. It's this blue bar on the left of them here. So 
I'd pause the game so that I can actually take a second to look at it. And right here, I would click on one right here, lockdown power. Now, it says here the hotkey is P, so that's very handy. So I'll unpause, I'll click Telderin, and I'll hit P. Boom. That's the lockdown power. No one can get in that room. Now it's fading, it's fading, it's fading, and boom. Then I would do it again. So what you would do, and then I, if I had this other person in here, if I teleported all three in at once. Now you can see, and I'll, I'll show you that again. I'll show you from up here and down here. This lockdown, is you need to be careful. See, they have to attack it to get in. Your own people cannot pass this. This this doesn't differentiate friend from foe. The lockdown doesn't differentiate. It, it will keep everyone out of the room. Now, the main point of it is if I do this, so let's go ahead and blow it here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, roughly 10, okay? Now, obviously my counting is probably a little bit off. I'm not a fucking metronome, but main main thing is here, especially because you're going to have more than one teleporting in at any given time. Your main strategy is going to be against an enemy ship, for example. You would teleport in all of your crew to one room, and as soon as you get there, you would use one to do lockdown. It would lock down the room. Now, the crew is going to try and break in. You're busy attacking that system. As the lockdown's about to wear off, you lock down again with your other crew member. It refreshes the thing, and then they still can't get in. If you still haven't destroyed whatever system you've picked by that time, then use the third crew member to lock down, and they still won't be able to get in. And with just the duration of one, if we go all the way back here, I'll just go all the way back to the hangar, if we go all the way back, two bubbles here is a 15 second cooldown. So if you do one lockdown and then do another lockdown after that, you'll be able to pull your guys out halfway through that lockdown. They won't be touched. So these guys are going to be very safe borders. Um, I have not been able to play around with this yet. I haven't done so, but... They're, I mean, they're strong fighters as, as well, just in their own right. I mean, they do have bonus health, so they'll just inherently be better than everything else except Mantis and Rock people. So, interesting. Definitely interesting. And it's something they'll have to play around with a little bit. But there you go. So, that was just all of the Type B's quick look at uh, their weapons, their crew, their power distributions, and shit like that and my general opinion on most of them. And I like most of them. There's not that many that I hate. The Vortex, I don't really like it, but again, if if I was lucky enough to get my hands on a drone recovery arm early on, I'd probably begin to really like the ship, because that would overpower me by quite a bit. But one crew member's pretty dumb. That's really hard to ignore, that you only have one. I mean, the Basilisk only has two, to be fair, and that's not very good either. But anyway... There you go, all the Type Bs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post gameplay footage of this at a slightly later date. I'm not super worried about gameplay footage for it. I have been playing it quite a bit, but I mostly just kind of wanted to get these out there because Type B is something that's hard for people to get. So I wanted to do that first video just detailing uh, my advice on getting those achievements. And then once you do and you have them, here's a video where I say if I think they suck or not. So here you go. Um, so that being said, uh, this has been Legendary Narwhal, and I'm gonna get out of here, so I'll see you guys next time.